In July 1961, a crack formed in a coolant pipe delivering cool water to a nuclear reactor on a submerged submarine. As the coolant gushed from the crack, the reactor core heated uncontrollably. The men on board knew that if they didn't find a way to cool the reactor soon, the best case scenario would be a meltdown and they would all die. The worst case scenario would be a nuclear explosion just a few miles from a United States military base causing the start of World War III. To save the men on board and potentially prevent World War III, several men would have to enter the irradiated room to fix the leak, sacrificing themselves to save the lives of the crew and potentially millions of others. This is the true story of the K-19 submarine disaster. In early 1959, the United States launched the USS George Washington. This was not the first nuclear submarine launched by the U.S., but it was the most powerful. The George Washington carried 16 nuclear warheads with a range of 2,000 kilometers that could be launched from underwater. The nuclear yield of each of these missiles was five times that of Little Boy, the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The Soviet Union had yet to launch a nuclear-powered sub carrying nuclear warheads, but their first, K-19, was well underway. At this time, the Soviet Union and the United States were deep into the Cold War. They were racing to advance rocketry and nuclear technologies discovered during World War II. In the foreground was the space race. With the launch of Sputnik, the first satellite in 1957, the Soviet Union was leading the race to put a man in space. But behind the scenes was nuclear development. Nuclear power had just been utilized 15 years earlier and its power was just being realized. Not just in warheads, but in power generation, specifically nuclear reactors for powering submarines. Before this, submarines were powered mainly by diesel engines and would frequently have to refuel. With the implementation of nuclear reactors, the submarines could remain submerged for months at a time and can remain in operation continuously for 30 years or more without refueling. The first nuclear submarine was the USS Nautilus, commissioned in 1954, several years ahead of Russia. Russia, at this time, may have been winning the space race, but the United States was well ahead in the naval race. Russia wanted to get their own nuclear-powered submarine carrying nuclear warheads as quickly as possible to show the United States that they weren't far behind. Further pressuring Russia was the entrance of the George Washington into the U.S. fleet. By 1959, construction of K-19 was fully underway and testing was about to begin. However, K-19 fell well short of the newly commissioned George Washington. K-19 carried only three missiles with a range of 650 kilometers, compared to the Washington 16 with a range of 2,000 kilometers. The K-19 must surface to launch while the Washington could launch submerged. This was very disappointing to the Soviet military officers, and in order to keep up with the United States and show that they were keeping up, the Soviet Union rushed through engineering and construction. This led to many issues with the submarine. During construction, a fire broke out, killing two workers. Six workers were gluing lining into an enclosed area and died from the fumes. An electrician was crushed to death by a missile tube while loading the missiles, and an engineer fell between two compartments and died. During testing, it was revealed that the K-19 had a one-degree roll when submerged. As the submarine went deeper, this angle increased. At a maximum depth, the roll was 40 degrees. Furthermore, during construction, a welder was installing a pipe for the primary cooling system. This pipe cooled the reactor, which is extremely vital as nuclear reactors must be kept at a specific temperature or a meltdown can occur, as evidenced by the Chernobyl meltdown that has left a region uninhabitable since 1986. As the welder secured a pipe of the primary cooling system, a molten hot welding electrode fell onto an exposed surface of pipe. The surfaces were supposed to be covered with drop cloths to prevent exposure However, because of the cramped condition in the room and the pressure to work fast, the step was omitted. The electrode fell onto the pipe, leaving a microscopic crack that no one would realize until two years later. On April 8, 1959, the K-19 was launched. 
Before a vessel is launched, however, a ceremonial bottle of champagne is smashed on the ship as a celebration of the ship and good luck for the coming voyages. If smashing the bottle is a sign of good luck, the alternative, of course, is a sign of bad luck. In this case, Captain Third Rank V.V. Panov swung the champagne bottle, hit the stern, it slipped from his grasp, slid down the propeller, bounced off of the rubber coating on the hull, and fell haplessly into the water. This was the christening of possibly the most ill-fated ship in history. Though the ship was rushed through production, it went through significant testing. Many engineers believed that this type of new technological development must include some trial and error. Therefore, they knew that the ship listed upon submerging and that they were going to encounter problems during trial runs, and they did. To add to the previous issues during construction, in January 1960, during shift change, the crew improperly operated the reactor, leading to a bent reactor control rod. The entire reactor had to be removed and repaired. This led to the demotion of Captain Panov, whose failed attempt at christening the ship had led many to believe that the ship was cursed in the first place. Also, during a maximum dive of 300 meters, the reactor compartment flooded causing the ship to roll and the captain to order an emergency surfacing. It was later discovered that in their haste to launch the sub, workers had failed to replace a damaged gasket. This damaged gasket allowed the water to flow in under pressure from the extreme depth. In another event, the ninth compartment flooded when the crew decided to dispose of wood from empty crates through the galley's waste system. All of these failures and others were eventually corrected and the K-19 was commissioned on April 30th, 1961 with a total of 139 sailors, including the captain. Captain Nikolai Zataev. Nikolai Zataev was drafted into the Red Army during World War II in 1943. He studied at Baku Naval Preparatory School, where he studied navigation. Throughout the 1940s and early 1950s, he quickly advanced from navigation officer to executive officer, then was given an early promotion by the defense minister to command his own submarine in 1954, just 11 years after being drafted into the military. Captain Zataev was a highly respected up-and-coming officer in the Red Army. On July 4, 1961, K-19 under command of Zataev was operating off of the coast of Greenland near a NATO military base. At 4.15 a.m., the pressure in the starboard nuclear reactor's cooling system plummeted, causing the water to boil and the reactor to overheat. The nuclear control rods were automatically inserted back into their housing to stop the nuclear chain reaction, but nuclear particles remained in the water, further heating the chamber. Without mitigation, the reactor room would continue to heat, potentially causing a steam explosion, killing everyone on board. The temperature of the reactor room rose to 140 degrees Celsius, and a fire spontaneously ignited. They were able to quickly extinguish the fire, but the rising temperatures must be lowered by adding cool water. The captain and crew knew that a steam explosion was possible with the rising temperatures. However, with their limited understanding of the nuclear reactor, they believed that the heating reactor room would cause a nuclear explosion. At this point, it was realized that the cooling system was not functioning properly. Coolant was leaking, and the pumps had failed, resulting in no coolant being pumped into the reactor chamber. The chamber heat was increasing and out of control. If something wasn't done quickly, another fire could start, damaging the reactor and causing a full-scale nuclear meltdown. Because a recent and separate incident had damaged the long-range radio system, it was impossible for K-19 to contact anyone for help. They were cut off from the mainland and sitting on a nuclear reactor that was getting closer and closer to a meltdown. Captain Zataev was afraid that the increasing temperatures in the reactor chamber would not only cause a meltdown, but could potentially result in a nuclear explosion. The submarine was conducting operations near a NATO base and Zataev was afraid that nuclear detonation that close to a NATO military installation could be seen as an attack and the United States would launch a retaliatory nuclear strike against Russia 
killing millions. He also knew that contacting the Americans would result in giving up Soviet secrets. Though this was a viable option over nuclear war, the first option was to try and cool down the reactor themselves. The captain, along with the engineering department, came up with a potentially novel solution. The solution was to use an air valve to connect the reactor cooling system to the drinking water of the vessel. This would funnel the cold drinking water into the reactor, cooling down the nuclear control rods. The problem with this solution was that it would have to be installed manually inside the nuclear chamber. Crew members would have to enter the irradiated nuclear chamber, exposing themselves to lethal doses of radiation. They knew that anyone that entered that chamber and stayed long enough to install the makeshift coolant system would soon die from radiation poisoning. However, if no one installed the cooling system, everyone on board would die, and the nuclear reactor may potentially detonate, causing nuclear war between the Soviet Union and the United States. Captain Zatayev made the decision to send eight men to certain death when he ordered the engineering department to make and install the new coolant device. The engineering crew cut the air vent valve from the air conditioning system and planned to route the drinking water to the reactor pressure vessel to cool the control rods. The eight members of engineering covered themselves with rain jackets and gas masks as that was all they had to protect themselves from the radiation. The eight men entered the reactor room and welded the air valve to the coolant line and pumped fresh cold water into the reactor. The temperature slowly dropped. They had prevented the disaster. However, not only had the eight men been exposed, hot steam and air exited the reactor room and mixed with the cabin air. Radioactive particles had entered the circulated air of the submarine and therefore had been dispersed throughout the ship. Though the eight members of engineering had clearly received a larger dose of radiation, not a single member of the entire crew had escaped unscathed. After the incident, Zatayev utilized short-range radio to contact his allies. The United States heard the distress calls and offered assistance. Zatayev was not willing to hand over the most sophisticated Soviet sub to the United States, so he declined assistance. Zatayev was afraid of a mutiny after the incident, so he had all firearms thrown overboard except a few that were held by only his most trusted officers. Soon, however, the Soviet ship S-270 heard Zatayev's calls for help and met up with K-19. They took the crew aboard and towed the K-19 to Polyarny Naval Base. A person that receives a dose of radiation of 5 sieverts has a 50% chance of dying within 30 days. All eight of the engineering crew received at least 7.5 sieverts, with Lt. Boris Korchilov receiving a dose of 54. Three of the men were dead within a week, and the other five were dead within three weeks. Over the next two years, 14 other crew members died from illnesses caused by the radiation exposure. Many crew members experienced chest pains, numbness, cancer, and kidney failure. Professor Z. Valensky provided treatment including blood transfusions and bone marrow transplants and is credited for saving many of the crew members' lives. Over the next two years, K-19's nuclear reactor was cleaned and repaired. The original containment vessel was discarded into the Kara Sea. After the repair, an area of 700 meters around the repair area was contaminated with radioactive material and blocked off for safety. On August 6, 1961, 26 members of the crew were awarded medals for courage and valor. After the incident, K-19 gained the nickname Hiroshima. After all of these issues, it would be obvious that K-19 was not seaworthy and would be disassembled. However, K-19 was cleaned up, repaired, and put back to sea. Just three years later, on February 24th, 1972, a fire would claim many more lives, which will be the subject of a future video. Again, the K-19 was repaired and put back into service. After several other accidents, the K-19 was finally decommissioned in 1990. On February 1, 2006, President of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, sent a letter to the Norwegian Nobel Committee requesting that the crew of K-19 be nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. The letter, in part, read, through the courage of the heroic sailors, a reactor explosion and a consequent environmental catastrophe in the ocean were averted. The nuclear contamination resulting from a blast aboard the K-19 
would have exceeded that caused by the Chernobyl disaster many times over. An explosion on board K-19 could have been taken for a military provocation or even an attempt to launch a nuclear strike on the North American coast. An immediate response by the United States and NATO could have triggered off a third world war. Even those who replaced Zatayev's crew on the K-19 knew nothing about it and none of the sailors were honored by the state. Moreover, those who died in cruel agony were secretly buried in special lead coffins without notification of the families. All of those who were aboard the K-19 that morning and did their job deserve to be regarded by mankind as people who did their utmost to save peace on Earth. Awarding a Nobel Prize to the crew of the K-19 submarine would come as fitting tribute to their exploit, the importance of which only grows with the passage of time. Under the rule of the Soviet Union, the crew of the K-19 were sworn to secrecy. It wasn't until 1990 that their actions and the true reasons why the men died were revealed. This is True Mysteries. Please like, leave comments, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.